So our next speaker is uh, Tony Toma. He's a Dean of Engineering Technology at Mohawk College, where he's been there for the last five years in Hamilton, Canada. He is a metallurgical engineer, and he spent 25 years in manufacturing, working on uh, casting and machining operations. And over the last uh, recently uh, five years or so, he's opened a 3D uh, print lab at Mohawk. And he's going to talk to us about modeling and 3D printing for rapid tool production. Tony, thanks. Good morning. So I'm going to talk today a little bit about the advances in 3D printing, but the formal terminology is that of manufacturing. Uh, the topics were, is going to be a little bit about what is additive manufacturing, the types of additive manufacturing, the uses, the benefits of additive manufacturing, applications in healthcare, and a little bit about our resource center. To, uh, to take you back, most processes today are subtractive in nature. In other words, from very simple, a stone mason or a stone, stone carver takes a block of stone and chips away until they discover their piece of artwork. And that's the best way to describe the subtractive manufacturing. In, in, uh, in manufacturing uh, technologies today, we uh, take a hunk of metal and we machine away uh, until we get our, our piece or part. And as many of you know, 80% of the material may be left on the floor at the end of the day. So very inefficient, uh, very time consuming. Uh, energy efficiency is an issue there as well. Uh, casting processes are a little bit better. You get near net shape, and, but then you still have to machine the fine details away. So out of manufacturing, commonly known as 3D printing, that's the layman's term, but it's a group of techniques used to create components directly from computer files. In other words, you're going directly from CAD file, computer aided design, to a part. So this may include a wide variety of plastic materials, poly-based materials, ceramics, metals, and even biomaterials that, that are being developed today. I'm not going to go into all these in details. Uh, these are the types that are commonly used today. I'm going to focus on the ones in blue, the FDM, the uh, uh, fused dis disposition modeling, the uh, laser processes, and a little bit about the polyjets. But there's many that are available. They have different uses, different pros and cons. So where is out of manufacturing being used today? It's being used in prototypes. In other words, you want to build something new. You don't have the time to build a mold or, and tooling for this. You can go directly from uh, CAD file to, to print and see whether or not it satisfies your, your desires and your requirements. In reverse engineering, and that's one uh, large area in, in, in medicine, taking a component where drawings do not exist. So in, in medicine, obviously, that could be a, a part of the human anatomy because you don't have a drawing for it, and actually recreating it. And production parts, uh, repetitive parts, multiple parts. So the advantage of SATA manufacturing is the time to market. You can do this very, very quickly. You lim eliminate the need for your patterns, the tooling, the fixtures, and complexity does not cost anything extra. And I'll show you some examples of that low volume parts where you cannot afford the fixed cost to set up and create your initial parts. And redesigning parts to be lower in weight and getting rid of unnecessary materials. You can also make parts you cannot make in any other fashion today. And if you have a part or an assembly that has multiple parts, you can now design, redesign it to make it as a single part. So some of the common parts um, up in the uh, up in the top left, uh, there's a, a heat exchanger for a Formula One car, a simple chess piece, uh, an exhaust or header for a, a, an engine, race engine. Even the, even the artistic world, uh, stilettos for a shoe, which you can't make any other way. A guitar, that's, you couldn't make that in any other way. Jewelry is a big example, and architectural type parts. In military components, um, this one piece on the top left is a rocket uh, fuel injector. And the integral uh, shapes fuel passes right in the middle of the part into an annular ring, and, and uh, the fuel comes out a very narrow slit. You cannot machine that in any other way. Uh, injector nozzles for uh, jet engine, landing gear for uh, aircraft. The bottom left is a turbine blade for a jet engine, and, and many of you know that if an aircraft is sitting on the ground being maintained, it's not making money. 
in the military applications that means not being deployed. So the, uh, this particular jet engine uh, blade, uh, the common failure is the tip keeps uh, eroding very quickly because of the heat. Uh, the cross section that's uh, the part above it is in plastic shows an actual curved hole leading to the tip to help cool the tip and the uh, cooling fluid would actually go right to the tip. So that gets the, the, air, uh, the craft uh, back up and sooner. And the bottom uh, right is an acoustic device that goes into a satellite application. Very small, made out of titanium and you could not make that any other way. One that we've been involved with is uh, bicycles. Uh, the techniques used in, in metal printing today. This, is, this bicycle, the frame of the bicycle is made in two builds and you can see the actual components that were made after the first build. And that's all slipped together to make a very, very tight, very light bicycle frame for a high-end bike. That uh, rear sprocket on the, on, uh, uh, for a bicycle, that's uh, our first prototype that's gonna be made in titanium as well. That is a single individual piece. Normally that'd be about 15, 20 pieces, including the screws. So FDM printing, uh, it's a thermoplastic filament. It's very similar to the spool of plastic that you would get on your whipper snipper for trimming the grass. Uh, it's heated and it goes through an injection process. You can make anything from toys to uh, turbines to uh, uh, elements for healthcare and automotive parts. The ABS materials that are available today vary quite a bit depending on the properties you want, how strong you want them, how uh, flexible you want them. And polyjet printing is something that's more, uh, more medically conducive. There's a number of different applications, very, a lot softer material. This is truly like uh, a, a jet printer per se and you're mixing chemicals together to make something light. And again, polyjet materials, there's a number of them, and they vary in opaqueness, they vary in, in rigidity, and they can be rubber-like, and they can, you can have a part with variable properties across the part as you, if you want. So the plastic polyjet uh, and, and printing machines that are available today, anything from a, a kit you, you can buy, and a 16-year-old can assemble that in two days and get software online for free. Uh, and uh, the larger machines, the bottom right of the polyjet machines, they can go up to three, four hundred thousand dollars. So, I asked to show you how an FDM process works. Fused deposition modeling, or FDM, is a layer additive manufacturing process that uses production grade thermoplastic materials to produce both prototype and end use parts. This technology is known to accurately produce feature details and has an excellent strength to weight ratio. FDM is ideal for concept models, functional prototypes, manufacturing aids, and low volume end use parts. The FDM process begins by slicing 3D CAD data into layers. The data is then transferred to a machine which constructs the part layer by layer upon a build platform. Thin thread-like spools of thermoplastic and support material are used to create each cross-section of the part. Similar to a hot melt glue gun, uncoiled material is slowly extruded through dual heated nozzles. The extrusion nozzles precisely lay down both support and thermoplastic material upon the preceding layers. The extrusion nozzle continues to move in a horizontal XY plane while the build platform moves down, building the part layer by layer. The finished part is removed from the build platform and cleaned of its support material. Raw FDM parts have visible layer lines. However, service providers such as Solid Concepts offer multiple finishing options to create smooth, even surface parts including hand sanding assembly, and cosmetic paint. Since FDM parts are constructed with production-grade thermoplastics, including ABX, polycarbonate, and Ultim, they are both functional and durable. FDM is utilized in a number of industries, including aerospace, automotive, industrial, commercial, and medical. 
The next uh, area of focus is the laser processes, and the laser processes focus uh, on the use of powder materials, whether it be plastic or metal. They are a more rigid process. They are called, they are known in the industry as being more commercial uh, processes, the very fine, fine structures, and uh, you can get some great looking parts from them. Uh, the main equipment, uh, these are I think almost every single supplier that's out there today. Uh, the prices of this equipment uh, ranges from anywhere from half a million to almost a million dollars, and that doesn't include the support equipment, so you add another 50% on top of that. The powder metals that are available today, uh, some of them, in, uh, I won't list them all, but there's some that are in, of interest. There are some poly, uh, polyamides that are like a nylon 22, which uh, can be used in sterilization for medical applications and some of the peak pro, uh, materials as well. In the metals, stainless steel and uh, titanium 64 are common for aerospace uh, military applications as well as, uh, as for medical applications. So the laser processes, uh, there's no uh, language behind this, but what happens is a layer of powder is uh, distributed onto a bed. The laser comes in and will laser in two dimensionals, basically fuse the material together. The table index is down and another layer of material goes on top of that. So in, in roughly about 20 micron increments to build your part. So in healthcare, where is additive manufacturing being used? It's been used in, in planning and simulation, clinical trials, R&D, robotics automation, uh, education, marketing, fossils and art artifacts. I've actually asked, uh, a museum has asked me to make dinosaur bones. Uh, forensics and, and of course implants. So as an example, we can take today uh, CT scan or MRI scans, slice those scans, and create uh, a skull in, in 3D CAD file, and then we can build uh, model implants for uh, the patient. Uh, what we use is we use a DICOM uh, structure that's a typical output for uh, data, uh, data formula that comes out of the CT scans and, uh, and MRI machines, we create the 3D CAD files, we can do measurements, we can do anatomical models, and we can uh, create some, uh, some stress analysis of those particular parts. Uh, applications include some guidance systems for, uh, for surgeons going in for, uh, for brain surgery. We can make uh, some cranial uh, replacement parts. If you want to see the structures that are inside the uh, vascular system inside, we can actually scan that and actually print that to see where all that is. In the bottom case, uh, a uh, case where uh, somebody has had a, a mis mishap in their, in their skull and we needed to recreate that portion so that can be sc scanned, modeled, and you see a finished titanium piece with the screw holes already ready to go to, uh, to repair that skull. Yeah. Ah, sorry, wrong one. In orthopedics, obviously many of you have seen these before, uh, in, in hip and knee replacement joints. Just to note that the, uh, the material, especially in metals, we can change the density of the material. And by changing the density and, and giving this uh, porosity into the surface, that allows the bone structure to grow back into uh, the, uh, the metal to give it a tighter bond. In orthopedic engineering as well, uh, many orth orthopods know where to cut and where not to cut uh, roughly, but if you want something more exact, we can actually uh, real, uh, identify where all the critical uh, areas are so that you don't cut in that area. So a little bit of pre-planning there for your surgery. And uh, this is a case where uh, some radical surgery, uh, this is a case of a 15-year-old boy in Croatia uh, who had uh, some uh, cancer in the hip. A uh, whole section of the hip had to be uh, removed. And in a matter of two weeks, a scan was created, an implant was designed, modeled, built, machined and finished, and uh, the, uh, the op uh, 
3D model was completed, and this is the final uh, resolution. So that, that took a, a total of two weeks to, to complete. Some pretty radical surgery there. Uh, some of the orthopods that I've talked to are telling me that uh, that's probably a weak joint right there. Uh, so they question whether or not that'll work. But a better case, a uh, recent case in England uh, where this uh, gentleman had a misfortune of having a motorcycle accident, had some emergency surgery, but obviously some dis uh, disfigurement. Uh, eye socket was lowered and uh, his cheekbone was not uh, symmetric. And in this particular case, what surgeons did through the scanning of that, uh, of his uh, skull, uh, created a, a, scan, uh, a CAD file, designed a cutting guide, oops, sorry, uh, designed a cutting guide uh, for the surgeons to remove bone, uh, de uh, designed a, a repositioning guide, and in that trough is where bone fragments would go back in to create some, uh, some conformity, and a titanium structure was developed and inserted. Uh, so, and, and also uh, an orbital lift as well. So dental applications, uh, this uh, bottom one here, uh, stemmed implants, this is a, a new design. I built 400 of these in one shot. Uh, that, that'll insert the tooth and the stemmed implant all in one, in one uh, operation. Uh, anatomical models we can create as well in the plastic units. Uh, and many different types of, of parts, especially for amputees that are being developed. And the amputee process right now for, uh, for models is very time consuming and painful for the client. Uh, on the organic side, uh, this is a heart valve, uh, ear implant, noses, uh, models for heart and surgery, and uh, some nasal passage uh, inserts to replace cartilage in metal. Uh, the case of the University of Michigan, this uh, poor child had, uh, they scanned it and, and identified that there was a, a restriction or a collapse of the bronchial tube. Uh, the university uh, acquired FDA uh, permission to develop this uh, biodegradable stent, inserted it, and the baby started breathing on its own without a me uh, mechanical uh, assistance. Other uh, types of tools that can be made, uh, this is a spacer for a uh, spinal uh, surgery, and then you can go ahead and, and uh, fuse the vertebrae together. And uh, this, uh, this washing rotor used to be 32 individual parts, and now we're talking about two parts. So the last one, Dr. Envari already talked about. We were participating in Dr. Envari's uh, uh, tool. This is the prototype tool that we've developed for the incision tool, and that's gone off for, uh, uh, for clinical trials. And a little bit about our, our focus, uh, we're Applied Research Center at a community college level. Uh, we, we bring in uh, uh, industries to help explore the world of 3D printing. And what we provide to small and medium-sized enterprises is a, a, an avenue for them to explore that, that world of 3D printing, whether it be rapid prototyping, reverse engineering, or new designs, and obviously training of our students and our employees. And we're looking at new powder formulations. So, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>